Today I'm going to show you how to design sculptural 3D printed pots in Fusion 360. We'll go through each step of designing and printing this pot, and you can use this process to make any shape that you can imagine. If you want to print these particular pots, the STL files are available through the link in the description. Alright, let's get started. We're going to model our pot using the Create Form workspace. This is an amazing part of Fusion that allows you to create complex sculptural shapes, but I think it's also one of the most intimidating parts of the software. However, once you get the hang of a few simple tools, you can create some incredible complicated shapes without too much effort. So we'll go ahead and enter the workspace by clicking on Create Form, which is the purple box with the star. And now that we're in the Form workspace, you'll notice that the tool selection at the top has changed. Whenever you're creating a form, you'll want to start with a shape that's as close as possible to your final product. And since we're making a plant pot, we're going to start with a cylinder. So I'll go ahead and click on the XY plane to start my cylinder. And I've gone ahead and measured my existing plant pot. This one is three and a quarter inches in diameter by three and a quarter inches tall. So we'll make our cylinder that same size. I'll type in 3.25 and click and then I'll type in 3.25 for the height. And you'll notice that we now have a few more options to fill in. The first one is diameter faces. And if we make this number 30, for example, you notice that we'll now have 30 faces around the diameter. The more faces you add, the more complicated modeling you can do. For our purposes, I'm going to use 14 diameter faces. We can also change the number of height faces. I'm going to choose six height faces, and you'll notice that I now have six faces along the height. We're only creating our cylinder on one side of the XY plane, and the next option is super important, symmetry. If we select no symmetry, you'll notice that those green lines go away. But I want circular symmetry because my plant pot is pretty much symmetrical around that center axis. And what this allows us to do is if we edit one of these faces or one of these edges, those changes will propagate all the way around the cylinder, which speeds up things immensely and allows us to get really clean professional results. So I'll go ahead and click OK. If we double click on one of these green lines, you'll notice that the rest of them turn yellow. And this indicates that these are symmetrical faces and anything we do on this edge will also propagate to the rest of the edges. I'm going to right click on this edge and I'm going to select crease. I'll click OK. And now you'll see that our cylinder is faceted all the way around. The reason I'm doing this is I want to create these peaks which spiral around the perimeter of our plant pot. And creasing our shape like this is going to make this a lot easier. Now I want to select one of the faces all the way down. So I'm going to hold shift and click inside each of these rectangles. Holding shift allows us to select multiple things at once, and the rest of them turn yellow because we have that circular symmetry. Now I'm going to right click again, but this time I'm going to click on edit form. Now this edit form tool is the main tool we're going to use here. And you'll notice that it brings up this really robust set of tools. It allows us to move things around, it allows us to scale things, it allows us to rotate things, and do these really complicated sculptural changes in just a simple step. But for now, I'm just gonna hit Control Z to undo, and I'm going to go into my top view. Whenever you're in the Edit Form tool, if you hold the Alt key, it allows you to change your editing into an extrude. And that's exactly what I wanna do now. So I'm gonna zoom into my face, and I'm gonna use this tool, which allows us to do edits along the XY plane. I'll hold Alt, I'll click on the square, and I'm going to pull out from the center of my cylinder. And you'll notice that now we are extruding each face of our cylinder. I only need to extrude out a little bit, and I don't want to be too far to either one side, like this, or like this. So I'm going to stay as straight as possible, doesn't have to be perfect, and come out by about 0.05 inches. All right, that looks good, so I can go ahead and click OK. If I orbit around, you'll see that we now have these rectangular prisms arranged in a circle. So now I'm going to zoom in to one of my little valleys here, and I'm going to select one of the sides of that valley all the way down. 
Again, I'm holding shift so I can select multiple things at once. And then again, right click and go to edit form. We'll go back into our top view to make seeing our changes easier. And now I'm going to make edits without holding shift. I'm just simply pulling this face around in space. And I'm going to use this XY shift tool because I want to constrain these changes so they only happen along the XY plane. And I'm going to pull this face to the side so that I create the peak which is going to form my spiral. So I'm going to pull it to the side until I have a peak in approximately the center of my face. That looks pretty good, so I'll hit OK. I'll orbit back to the side. And now I'm going to select the other side of my valley. Everything got a little changed, so it might be hard to see, but this is the face that we want to select. I held shift to select all of those faces, right click, edit form. Now we'll go back to our top view. We'll use that XY plane shift tool again without holding alt and we're gonna pull it the other way. Now, as we're doing this edit, we wanna be really careful that we don't overlap faces or else when we finish this form, Fusion will give us an error because we have crossing faces. So what we don't want is something like this. Once we start crossing faces, we are in dangerous territory. So I'm going to keep my faces all separate and try to create a relatively symmetrical peak. I'll go back into my top view. I'm just gonna keep moving this around until I like what I see. All right, that looks good. So I'll go ahead and select okay. So now we have this cool spiky cylinder and we can start working on the profile of our plant pot. So now I'm going to go to a side view and I'm going to window select this center line. So we have everything around that center perimeter selected. I'm going to go to right click and edit form. We're going to use a new tool now within this edit form tool set, and that is the scale tool, and it is the dot right here. So I'll click and hold, and I wanna to try to create the bulge in the center of my plant pot. I'm dragging it to the right to increase the scale of this segment, and that looks okay for now, so I'm going to click okay. Now I'm gonna hold shift and select this top segment as well as the bottom segment because I wanna make the same change on both of these at once. So I'll right click, go to edit form. And this time we're gonna scale these parts smaller. So I'm going to click and hold on that dot and drag it to the left. And you'll see it starts to collapse in on itself. That looks pretty good for now and I'll click okay. And now I wanna match the profile with these other segments. So I'll start with the segment closest to the middle, hold shift to select both at once, right click, edit form, and I wanna scale these ones a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna use the scale tool, drag it to the right. There we go, that's looking a little more uniform. So I can click okay. So now that's a nice uniform curve, but it's a little more pumpkin and not as much sphere. And I want this to be a little more spherical. So I'm going to select everything, right click, go to edit form. And now I'm gonna scale this vertically. So I'm going to click and hold this horizontal line and pull it upwards. And now that's going to elongate my shape, trying to get it a little more spherical. That looks a little better, but I think I want a little more of a bulge in the center. So I'm gonna select the center one more time, right click, edit form, and scale it up just a hair. And I think that looks just about perfect. So now we're ready to do my favorite part of this process, and that's twisting our pot into a spiral. So I'm going to window select everything except for this bottom segment right click, edit form. I'll orbit so I get access to this wheel here, which allows me to twist on the XY plane. So I'm going to click and hold this wheel and start rotating it around. And I'm gonna twist it to 40 degrees. So I'll keep going until my counter hits 40, or you could just type in 40 right there. 
and you'll notice that this bottom segment is now twisted. That twist propagates a little up into our next segment, but everything else is pretty much unchanged. So I'll click OK. And now I'm going to select everything except for the bottom two segments. Again, we'll right click, edit form. And I want my twist to become gradually less and less as we move up the pot. I want it to start really tight at the bottom and then become more gradual as we move upwards. So I'm going to twist this segment by 35 degrees instead of by 40. Just type in 35 to make it a little easier and click OK. Beautiful. So now, as you might have guessed, we're going to select everything except for the bottom three segments. And you'll might have noticed that I'm doing the selection in a side view, and that makes it really easy to select only the things that I want. I'll orbit back to our isometric view, right click, edit form. We'll subtract another five degrees, and this time rotate by 30 degrees. Click OK. Now we'll select only the top two segments, right click, edit form, and this time we'll twist by 25 degrees. And you can see our gradual spiral coming to life. It starts really tight at the bottom and then sort of unspirals as we come to the top. So I'm going to select the top segment, right click, edit form, twist this one by 20 degrees, subtracting another five degrees, click OK. And now I'm going to select only the top edge. Right click, edit form, and we're gonna do a final twist of 15 degrees. Beautiful. I spent a bit more time playing with this form and now I'm really happy with how it looks. So I'll go ahead and click on finish form. The first thing you'll notice is that this form is completely empty. When you use the create form tool, you're actually only creating a surface. So the first thing we have to do is make this into a solid body. To do that, we're going to use the boundary fill tool. This tool works by filling up a bounded volume with a solid. Our volume isn't entirely bounded though, because the top and the bottom are both empty. So to create those top and bottom bounds, we're going to use construction planes. So I'll create a new offset plane, go into a right view. Since we created this on the XY plane, I don't need a boundary plane on the bottom. I can just use the XY plane for that but I do need a boundary plane on the top. So I'll drag my offset plane all the way up to the top of my pot and I'll click OK. So we'll go to Create, Boundary Fill and we'll select the objects which bound our volume. So that is our pot, the XY plane and our construction plane. Our volume turned green, which is great. That's exactly what we want and we need to select it as a cell. So I'll click in this little check mark, click OK, and there we go. We now have a solid body. I'm going to change my visual style to shaded with visible edges so you can see that, and we can turn off our surface. At this point, I'm going to create a new parameter called shell thickness, and this is going to be the wall thickness of our plant pot. I'm going to make this 0.07 inches. I'll click OK, and click OK. So now we have a solid pot and we need to hollow out the inside. Your first instinct might be to use the shell tool. The shell tool is great, but for something like this, it's probably not the best choice. And there are two reasons for that. The first reason is the tool will probably fail altogether if we try to use it on our pot. This is such a complicated shape that Fusion likely won't be able to compute all of the offset faces it needs to do for the shell tool to succeed. And even if that shell tool worked, all of these spiraling faces would be projected inwards and we would end up with an unnecessarily complicated inside, which would likely add a lot of time to our print time. Instead of that, I want a nice smooth inside. We'll start by focusing on the top face of the pot. I'm going to create a new sketch right up here. I'm going to hit P for project and I'm going to project the perimeter of this top face. So now that we've selected that whole perimeter, I can hit OK. 
I'll double click on that perimeter to select it, click offset, and we're going to offset this inwards by the shell thickness. And this is gonna allow us to get a really clean top edge that follows the profile of the pot, even though we're not following the profile along the rest of the height. I'll select this profile, right click, extrude, and I'll extrude it downwards by two times the shell thickness. That's probably deep enough because everything above here will likely be covered in soil. So now that we have a really nice top edge of our pot, we can focus on the rest of the volume. I'm going to orbit to the bottom and create a new sketch on this face. Now we need to find the center of this face. And to do that, I'm going to create a three point circle. So I'll select three points around the perimeter of this shape. One, two, three. And now the center of this circle is the center of our pot. And while we're here, I'll just go ahead and create the drainage hole. I'll make this 0.5 inches in diameter. Finish sketch. Now we need to create an axis through the center of our pot. So we'll go to construct, and we're going to make an axis perpendicular to face at point. I'll click there, and we need to select the face and the point. So there is our point, there is our face, and there we go. We have a beautiful axis right through the center of our pot. I'm going to hollow out my pot by revolving a profile around this axis. So the next thing we need is a plane on that axis. I'll create a plane at angle, select the axis, and now we have a sketch plane. So I'll create a sketch, and now we're ready to draw our profile. We have to make sure that the bottom of our pot is solid, so I'm going to draw a line horizontal along the bottom, and I will offset this line upwards by the shell thickness. I'll draw a vertical line through the axis, and I'm going to use a spline to sketch out the profile of my cavity. Remember, we can always go back and adjust this so it doesn't have to be perfect on your first go. So I'll connect that to the bottom, click on the check mark, and then connect it to the top. There we go, we have a nice closed shape. So I can finish the sketch and use the revolve tool. So here is my profile. My axis is the construction axis. And it looks like we didn't poke out through the side of our pot, which is great. Click on OK. And there we go. We now have a hollow pot. And just to make things easier to see, I'm going to extrude out my drainage hole. Now, since we're 3D printing this pot, we don't want the walls too thick or else we're gonna waste a lot of filament. So I'm going to use the section analysis tool to check on the profile all the way down through the pot. So I'll select the face as the top and we'll start dragging this downwards to see what the thickness looks like all the way down the pot. So that looks pretty good. It gets a little thick right here, but altogether, I don't see any areas, eh, that area's a little thick. That looks really good. I don't think we have to make any edits to the spline. But if we did, we could always go back into this sketch, right click, edit the sketch, move any of our spline points around. So I can probably move this point out a little bit, finish sketch, and those changes propagate throughout my design. So I can go back to my section analysis, edit that, and double check to make sure that I still don't have walls that are too thin anywhere throughout my design. That looks great. So at this point, we're pretty much ready to print. At this point, I would suggest checking the dimensions of your pot to make sure that your plant will fit inside. You can always scale it if it's not big enough or scale it down if it's too big. So I've exported my pot to my slicer. I'm using Prusa Slicer, but of course you could use any slicer that you're comfortable with. And we can go ahead and slice our pot. I'm printing this pot out of PETG using 0.2 millimeter layer heights. PETG is a great choice for plant pots because it's really durable and you can print it watertight. I'll go through the print just to make sure that there's no areas that are too thin. Everything looks good. 
To increase the strength of this pot, I increase the number of perimeters from two to three. This is important in areas like this one where the pot gets really thin. Having those extra perimeters will just add strength to the entire piece. All right, everything looks good to go, so I can go ahead and export the G-code and start this print. This white PETG is made by Ceramic. I really like this stuff. It looks super clean, it prints well, and I'll leave a link for it in the description, along with the link to the STL files. This was my longest print yet, clocking in at just under 14 hours on my Prusa i3 Mark IIIs. I planted this pot with a parlor palm. I also designed two more pots to play with some different shapes. The pot on the left holds a ZZ plant, and the one in the middle holds a Peperomia Rosso. The small pot in the middle is the first one I designed, and it took about nine and a half hours to print. The one on the left is the last one I designed, and I think it's my favorite. That one took 16 and a half hours to print. It looks like it's also Abby's favorite. She's my puppy. I made this pot slightly oblong by scaling it non-uniformly in the Y direction right before printing. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as Abby enjoys lying on my foot. If you use these techniques to design your own pots or print the STLs linked in the description, I would love to see your results. You can tag me on Instagram at MorleyKurt or leave a comment on this video. Let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful and what other Fusion tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.